My name is Wendy Wright, and I am a dual certified adult and family nurse practitioner and the owner of Wright and Associates Family Healthcare, an NP owned and operated clinic located in both Amherst as well as Concord, New Hampshire. I'm here at the AANP annual conference that is held this year in San Antonio, Texas. I'm here to speak with you a little bit about arthritis and provide you with an update. There are more than a hundred rheumatologic disorders and when we actually break the numbers down, there's about 49 million Americans who are affected by some form of arthritis. Now certainly the most common and what you and I are going to encounter is osteoarthritis and currently that affects at least 46 million people. But when we actually look at the numbers, we know that those numbers are projected to double. And the reason for that, I believe, is twofold. We certainly are an aging population. In fact, by the year of 2020, one in every five adults is going to be over the age of 65. But we also have to factor in that at least 60% of all Americans are either overweight or obese. And we must take a look at the impact of obesity on conditions such as osteoarthritis, and we certainly know that it plays a huge role. There's about a million individuals with rheumatoid and about 8 million individuals who actually suffer from gout. And then we look at other rheumatologic disorders such as psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, inflammatory arthritis like a formerly known as Reiter's syndrome. So today in my lecture, I really focused on the latest diagnostic and treatment options for patients with both OA and RA because those are really two conditions that we as nurse practitioners treat regularly. Our job as nurse practitioners is to A, make that diagnosis, particularly as it pertains to rheumatoid, because much of the destruction that happens with rheumatoid arthritis actually occurs in the first year of the condition. With osteo, oftentimes by the time people present to us, they've had symptoms for years and they suffer from pain. And initially when it begins, the pain is only when they use those joints. But as that condition progresses, that pain becomes constant. And in my clinical practice, I find that what brings these patients in to consult with me is the pain that remains persistent all throughout the night, prohibiting them from getting a good night's sleep. We know that both of these conditions impact day-to-day -day functioning and can really impact someone's ADLs. So from our end, the important part is to make an accurate diagnosis. For OA, it's going to be through symptoms. It's going to be the presence of stiffness. We call this gelling. And in OA, that gelling lasts under 30 minutes. They often have crepitus of that affected joint. They complain about pain. And then when we x-ray that joint, we often see things like osteophytes. We see the presence of joint space narrowing. Now on the rheumatoid end, we make the diagnosis by the presence of at least four out of seven criteria. So what we're looking for here is the presence of joint pain and inflammation and swelling, particularly of the wrists and of the hand joints. We look for morning stiffness, but generally that morning stiffness is greater than an hour, whereas with OA, it's under a half an hour. We look also for other symptoms, such as weight loss or nocturnal sweating, uh, fevers. So we look for the presence of more systemic symptoms. We can't hang our hat on the presence of a rheumatoid factor because it's estimated that 15% of people with rheumatoid arthritis will actually never develop a positive rheumatoid factor. The latest diagnostic test that we're doing for rheumatoid is what's called an anti-CCP, which looks to be a little bit more sensitive and specific than what we see with a rheumatoid factor. So it's called an anti-CCP. So if you're not doing this when you suspect rheumatoid, you need to. The other test you want to do when you suspect rheumatoid is an ANA. It's estimated that 20% of people with rheumatoid will have a positive ANA. And last, a clinical pearl for my NP colleagues, 20% of patients that present with rheumatologic symptoms actually have underlying inflammatory bowel and not rheumatoid. So make sure you're asking about nocturnal diarrhea and awakening. In terms of treatment with OA, there is not a lot of new and glamorous treatments. We continue to use acetaminophen. We continue to use NSAIDs, COX-2 inhibitors. But I encourage you also to explore some of your topical agents, your topical diclofenacs, Voltarins, and capsaicin. 
there isn't a lot of support any longer for using things like your hyaluronic acids. In fact, two major guidelines no longer support the use of hyaluronic acid. My experience is it works in a few people, but not the majority. And you can certainly still use corticosteroid injections, but for your patients with OA, one of the best things you can do for them is to help them lose weight. You can also help them to get into a PT program and an exercise self-management program. For your patients with rheumatoid, as I conclude today, the treatments, remember, it is the first year where most joint destruction occurs. Our job is to diagnose it quickly and as quickly as possible get these folks into a rheumatology or an orthopedic practice. They need a DMAR. They're likely going to need low-dose prednisone so that we can decrease the inflammation and the joint destruction. I know many of your patients with rheumatoid are also on what we call the biologics. From a primary care perspective, remember, these biologics preclude you from giving these folks any live virus vaccines. You want to make sure you're familiar with what we call a sick day protocol. So if they're sick, we need to stop these biologics and we need to make sure that we're monitoring them closely for the emergence of infections, a re-emergence re of tuberculosis, and even maybe demyelinating diseases such as MS. I hope I've given you a quick recap of my hour plus lecture that I gave here at AANP in San Antonio. Thank you. I'm Wendy Wright, family nurse practitioner.